All right. Well, last week I was able to take my second trip to Israel, uh, oh. a place of massive religious, cultural, and political significance. And as a member of America's military, I'm always struck by the culture of service in Israel. Mm -hmm. It's an American ally surrounded by enemies in a dangerous region. Uh, so as I took this trip, I decided to ask kind of rank and file members of the IDF, the Israeli military, Israeli Defense Forces, what it's like to defend your country in such a dangerous neighborhood where you're surrounded and everyone serves. And this mm -hmm. is what they had to say. Place yourself in one of these bunkers along one of these trench lines atop Golan Heights, which is in northern Israel, a strategic location that Israel seized in 1967. If you look out just from this location, you can see Syria. You can see Jordan. Obviously, Syria today, a country embroiled in civil war with the Islamic State on the march. A location like this, when you look out, reminds you of the precarious existence of the state of Israel. I have rocket fire in a sustained fashion coming from an enclave 45 minutes drive from your capital city. We're used to the fact that there is, you know, they're surrounded by enemies, so this is just like, you know, this is normal life. Fighting for their homeland is something almost every Israeli citizen does, literally. While only one half of one percent of the U.S. population serves in our military, an overwhelming majority of men and women serve in the Israeli Defense Forces. It's what we call a people's army. The meaning is that every young man or woman is obligated to, to, uh, to go to the army, to draft, and serve his country. Everyone's invested and everybody has a role to play, and everybody will live with and live by way of the results that are brought about in the battlefield. It's a unique battlefield for many Americans to fathom, because it's one fought day in and day out right along Israel's own borders. If you want to protect the United States, you go far away from, from your borders. For us, uh, down here it's our home, and over there it's the enemy. We see them on the eyes. We, we live the situation. What's it like to fight on the front lines knowing you're defending your homeland immediately behind you, which is a, a bit of a different concept than most American soldiers uh, face? Yeah, so, you know, it's very difficult in Israel not to feel that because even, let's say, when I was, you know, in, in the Second Lebanese War, so we're, you know, we're positioned there, you know, close to the border. The feeling is that you, you know that it's for real, okay? So there's no, it's not an abstract connection between, you know, what you're doing and how it affects your security at home. In the end of the war, and we just finished uh, three, 30 days in, the, in Lebanon, and I returned to the Israeli border, and I saw my wife and my three children there. It was an amazing moment, but it gives you the understanding of what's happening in Israel. Everything is so close. You fight for, uh, in the place you live. We're standing right here on the Golan Heights, mm -hmm. but if you look behind us, right. uh, within our view, mm -hmm is co terrain controlled by Jabhat al-Nusra or al-Qaeda in Syria. Have yeah. you seen that movie, A Few Good Men? <laughs> yeah. I eat breakfast. 300 yards from 4,000 Cubans who are trained to kill me. Yeah, now we're having an interview three kilometers from al-Qaeda members that would love to kill you, that yeah. would love to kill me. Walking around the Golan Heights, like so many other parts of Israel, and seeing families hiking and sightseeing, it's easy to forget the danger lurks so close by until one of our interviews is interrupted. Don't disturb him. There's a war going on uh, j just on our right here. And the background noise right now of bombs going off, uh, that's just common. I feel pity for them. I hope they, uh, somewhere, somewhere in the future they find the peace because uh, no one deserves to live in the war. Hmm. Not them, not us. You know, a couple of takeaways. Oh, that, that, gentleman, amazing, uh, that gentleman and the gentleman in the red, we weren't scheduled to interview them. We, had, we needed more people to interview, so we just found males and grabbed them. Wow. The guy in the red shirt, he's a private in their army and a PhD. You don't see PhDs who are privates in our military. Wow. Second thing is, all of them said, where's America? You know, it's such a key ally, critical ally. They're worried about the level of support, the Iran deal, a lot of concerns. But what an amazing look, amazing people that defend their country well, every day. And that amazing moment where the bomb's going off, what was it's that? It's commonplace. It's fighting in Syria, the civil war that's going just a few kilometers across the border, you know, that instability could, could affect It was amazing. If you hadn't so. stopped and reacted, I don't think he was going to. He wasn't going to react. No. You know, I see this every day. Every day. This is normal yeah. for me. It's amazing. Amazing Thanks, story. Thank, Thank you. you for bringing it to us, Pete.